I'm really excited about this week's lesson. We're on lesson number seven in our Three Cosmic Messages series. The title of this lesson is Worshiping the Creator. Now, here's the central thought of your teaching. Christ is worthy of our worship because he created us. Now, the controversy between good and evil is over worship. I point that out, for example, in Sunday's lesson. If you'll notice the last paragraph on the page 57, if you have the English quarterly, I point out the central issue in the book of Revelation is worship. We were created as worshiping beings. Every one of us worships something or someone. True worship, the worship of the Creator, enables us to discover life's true purpose. It gives us a reason for living. It gives us not only something to die for, but even more significantly, something to live for. And if need be, to endure tribulations for. And indeed, as the final crisis arrives, we'll be, we will better understand that we must, through many tribulations, enter the kingdom of God. So once you understand that you're created by God, that God shaped you, he fashioned you, that you are special in his sight, this whole issue of evolution seems to fade into insignificance in your personal life. Why? Because you know that you did not evolve. You're not some speck of cosmic dust. You're not some genetic accident. God fashioned you. God made you, and he has a purpose for your life. Now, the devil wants to attack that purpose. That's why in 1844, when God was raising up a divine movement of destiny that would emphasize worshiping the Creator and lead men and women back to the true Bible Sabbath. That's why at that very time, the devil prompted the first draft of the origin of the species to be written by Charles Darwin, indicating that the theory that we are here because of fortuitous chance we're here because of some divine, some cosmic accident. We're here because we evolved. Can you imagine evolution growing and developing? At the same time, parallel a message to go to the ends of the earth to call men and women back to worshiping the Creator on the Sabbath. That's what this lesson is all about. It's about worshiping the Creator. Why do we worship anyway? Revelation chapter 14, verse 7 Remember, it says, I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to them that dwell on the earth, to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God, give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him who made heaven, earth, the sea, and the fountains of waters. Now, who is the one that made heaven, earth, sea, and the fountains of waters? What do we call him? We call him the creator. And did you see that expression, made heaven, earth, sea, and the fountains of waters? That's a direct quote, isn't it? almost exact, from Exodus chapter 20, verse 8 to 11, and verse 11, where it's describing the Sabbath commandment, and we're to remember the Sabbath because God created. Why is God worthy of our worship? According to Revelation 4, verse 11, where it says, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, because you created all things. So God is worthy of our worship because he created all things. Lucifer a being of dazzling brightness in heaven, challenged the government of God. And one thing Lucifer hated, absolutely hated, was the fact that Jesus was the creator. Ephesians 3, 9 says that God created all things through Jesus Christ. God's the master designer in creation. Jesus is the active agent in creation, and he creates through the power of the Holy Spirit. So the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit in this divine union of the Godhead participate in the creation of our world. But Satan hated that. He could not create. He could not bring forth life. So he challenges the government of God. He says that God is a vindictive judge, that God wants obedience, but he doesn't give love. And the devil, to destroy the concept of creation, has attacked the Sabbath, because the Sabbath is the memorial of creation describing why Christ is worthy of creation and worthy of our worship because he created us. If God is our creator, he must be very close to us. He must care for us immensely. We bring that out on, in Tuesday's lesson. In Wednesday's lesson, we point out that the gospel, the judgment, and creation are all linked. Remember Revelation 14, 6 says that I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven having the everlasting gospel 
And then it talks about, in Revelation 14, 7, the judgment, the obvious judgment has come. And it talks in Revelation 14, uh, verse 7, the last part, worship him who made. So you have the gospel in verse 6, the judgment in verse 7, and creation. They are all linked together. Christ is our all-loving, all-powerful creator. Through Christ, our creator, who created us and he redeemed us, we can pass the judgment. Why can we have confidence in the judgment? We studied a couple of weeks ago because Jesus is our advocate. As we come to Christ, we can have confidence and security in the judgment because Jesus stands in our place. We come in the judgment, as Ellen White says, not in our merits, but in Christ's merits. Not in our righteousness, but in Christ's righteousness. But there's another reason we can have confidence in the judgment. Because the one that created us so uniquely, the one that created us so special, doesn't want one of us to be lost. He wants every one of us to be redeemed and saved in his kingdom. He is our creator. He is our redeemer. We praise God that the creator and the redeemer stands for us in the judgment. In Thursday's lesson, on page 61 in the English edition, I point out this. It's the second to last paragraph in the page. The first angel's message to worship the Creator came after the cross, after it had become known to the onlooking universe and to Christ's followers that the one who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water, is the same one who, through, who though being God, took the form of a bondservant and came in the likeness of man and being formed in the appearance of men, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death of the cross. What an amazing spectacle it must have been to those who knew Jesus before he came to earth as a human being, to, to the angels in heaven. No wonder the heavenly beings worship him as well. As for us, redeemed by his blood, can we do anything else but worship him as creator? The final test of our loyalty in earth's history will be when church and state unite and a substitute counterfeit Sabbath is legislated by a law, our test will be, will we be loyal to the Creator? Will we be loyal to the Redeemer? Will we stand for Christ then? I know that through His grace and by His power, we together can stand. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, bless each teacher. Help them to make it plain that Jesus is our Creator. Jesus is our Redeemer. And in Christ, we can stand in the judgment. May every class member in this week's class have hearts that are one with your heart, minds that are one with your mind. May they be touched by your spirit, saved by your grace. May they live with you forever. In Jesus' name, amen.